today I'm going to show you how to make as much as a 65% return on your investment flipping and holding multifamily real estate. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. The show where I work with folks like you, everyday people trying to make their money in the real estate space. Today I'm working with my dude, Alex. And Alex, we got to talk, brother. We got to talk about what you're trying to do, dog, because it's, uh, it's bad shit crazy. I'm not going to lie, man. Your criteria don't make any goddamn sense. But that's okay, brother, because I could take that and mold it into something that does make a little sense, right? As I said at the top of the show, I'm going to show you how to buy multifamily distressed real estate, make as much as 65%. But before I even get into that, we got to talk, dude. Let me, let me sit down with you for a second, bro. What you're trying to do, right? You're trying to target uh, buildings in like the 5 to 20 unit range, okay? And you want to buy distressed assets, okay? And you want to burr them, right? Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat, okay? You buy a distressed asset, you fix it up, get tenants in there, refinance it, keep owning it, make money. It's awesome. Makes sense, okay? We, me and you, bro, sim simpatico right there. We're on the same same thing there, right? But then this is where you went off the deep end, bro. Uh, what you wanted to do, you wanted to pick up this asset, not with cash, but using commercial financing. So you want to buy a distressed asset that you could burr, but you want to finance. That in and of itself is going to be a problem, especially when you're in the 5 to 20 unit uh, unit range because the, the way financing works, bro, on properties like that is it's not based on your credit and your income like residential financing. It's based on the debt service coverage ratio, right? So uh, for you, the very nature of picking up an apartment building that you can do a burr on is that it's not performing, right? So for you to actually utilize financing, it needs to perform. And that goes into your other thing, right? You, you said you wanted to cash flow from day one. I mean, bro, I mean, you're either wet or you're dry. You know what I'm saying? You're in the pool or you're out of the pool, right? I mean, it's not, it's not how it works, man. The asset's either going to be performing and it's going to be cash flowing and you can use financing or you're going to need to use like cash and target a distressed asset, right? Like putting them together. I mean, that's not going to happen. On top of that, you were hoping uh, that it has a brand new roof and stuff like that. Bro, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> like, A distressed asset is not going to be performing, okay? And to get it to perform, you need to perform repairs, buy, renovate, okay? So you can't do a bird deal, right? You can't do a bird deal, bro, without performing repairs and buying a distressed building. So you can't just have your cake and eat it too, right? So that's not going to work, okay? So the closest thing that I could put together for you that – resembles your impractical wish list bro and hey if i'm being a little hard on you it is what it is folks if you're if you're coming to this show and you're wanting to work with me as your broker and you're wanting me to help you invest in real estate you got to know something about me i'm gonna tell you what you need to know not what i think you want to know right because uh you know that's just not what I do, right? I mean, you're not going to learn unless I give you the hard truths, right? So the closest thing I can get you, right, is this four-unit building, right? The four-unit building that I have in mind uh, can sort of accomplish some of what you want, right? Because this four-unit building, because it's a four-unit and not a five-unit, uh, you can buy it even though it's sort of distressed. I'll get into that in a second. But you could buy it, okay? You could buy it. With financing, because the financing is not going to be focused on the performance of the building, right? Because the building does bring in rent. It does have tenants, but it could be much better, okay? But you could still use your financing because they're going to focus that on your income and your ability to get a loan. So that's one. That's why I decided to back you down to a four unit. I think going with a four unit is going to make sense. And then as far as the repairs you need to do to get them, uh, to, to get this property up to a higher ARV in the future, okay? 
uh, you can utilize some rough, weird, out of the ordinary situations that are more so related to the city than the property itself, right? So in a roundabout way, this almost accomplishes a lot of what you want, right? You're able to pick up a distressed property, but you can still use financing up front. Uh, but you do have a major value add component down the road with slightly minimal uh, repairs. The reason for some of the repairs is really not related to the building being totally screwed up. It's related to the city being screwed up, right? So because of all that, you could actually turn out a huge profit of like 65% on this sucker. But you got to deal with a lot of bureaucratic BS, right? So uh, let me take a quick break, and then I'm going to open this thing up, and we're going to go into heavy detail on what the heck I'm talking about. Because I'm sure you might be a little confused right now, uh, but it's all going to make sense by the end of the video. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's pull it up, right? This quad, okay? This is priced super low, right? Because it's going to be a bird deal, okay? The address, 4024 East 26, Newburgh Heights, 44105. 129900 which is stupid, stupid low for a quad in the Cleveland market. But it's been for sale forever, dude. It's been for sale for 132 days, right? So what is going on? Is this something where it's just in a really bad neighborhood and it's terrible and it's way overpriced and even though normal quads in like your C grade area sell for 200K, but this is just in like an F class neighborhood? Is it that? No. No, it's not. As a matter of fact, it's a pretty solid C grade neighborhood, dude. Newburgh Heights, it's pretty nice, right? And as far as the property goes, is it just like so screwed up that it's like uninhabitable nope it actually looks pretty darn nice okay let's get to the interior that's where i'm trying to go right now we'll talk about that exterior in a little bit but look at the interior here right pretty decent uh looking stuff right nothing amazing but nothing nothing uh out of the ordinary right we actually already have three tenants in there right home depot lowe's quality cabinetry right we got tenants in there okay Current rents are four and a quarter, five ninety five, five ninety, and the owner actually lives there. Okay, now as far as market rents go, we're looking at six fifty, six fifty, seven fifty, seven fifty. Right, two of them are one beds, two are two beds. Right, so twenty eight hundred, thirty three thousand six hundred dollars. Okay, normally for that kind of rent in a C grade neighborhood in a property that's pretty decent, you're spending about two hundred thousand dollars. Right, so everything. Is like, what the heck's going on? Why isn't this selling? It's $70,000 less. It's been on the market for like almost six months. What's the catch? Because you know there's a catch, right? If there wasn't a catch, it wouldn't be wouldn't be on the market this long. But the catch is not that the building is in horrible condition. It's not. It's in pretty good condition. Yes, the tenants are paying a little bit less than market rent, but that's not the end of the world, right? You just slowly work them up, right? We talk about that in a lot of the shows, right? So what is the problem it's the city now i already said it's a c-grade neighborhood though it's a pretty pretty nice neighborhood i like rentals in newburgh heights you know they perform pretty well okay it's nice but the city has got a pos that's point of sale and if you've never heard of the point of sale lots of cities in the cleveland market have those i got a link to a video all about the pos in the show notes below check that out right but Newburgh Heights' POS is, like, exceptionally nitpicky, right? Newburgh Heights is, like, this little tiny little village. There's only, like, 880 residents, right? And uh, the mayor uh, has actually uh, been involved in corruption scandals, right? Like, he got in trouble for campaign finance reform. Like, Steve, make sure you throw that on the screen here because I don't really like that guy. He's a doucher. So anytime we get the opportunity to talk shit about him on the, on the show here, we will. Because I'm assuming he's on his way out, okay? But as of right now, the building department is, is ran by him. Uh, and, you know, they're kind of making their own rules over there. It's, it's pretty wild how, how uh, nitpicky and crazy they could be, right? So with the POS, this is a double-edged sword. And you have to understand this going into it if you do a deal here. Uh, you're going to get solid tenants, solid performance, right? 
And in this particular case, the POS is so problematic, it's allowing you as an investor to come in and pick this up at a great discount. It will work out great for a burr. But you got to remember, that's a double-edged sword, okay? At one point, you will be on the other end of this, and you will be the seller. As I said, it's my opinion that that mayor is on his way out, okay? There's even been talks about annexing Newburgh Heights into Cleveland, right? There's another little village called Lindale. Uh, believe it or not, that little mayor, she got in trouble too, all right? She's been in trouble. Steve, put that on the screen as well. These little podunk fucking villages just trying to make their own rules, and everybody's just like, yo, what in the fuck are you guys doing? Like, Lindale's got, I think, like 100 houses in it. Uh, Newburgh Heights has like 880. Shockingly, Holton Wise is like twice the size of both these cities put together. But a lot of people in and around the Cleveland area have been calling for these these crummy little villages uh, that are too small to support their own like government uh, on a tax revenue basis to be annexed into Cleveland because what they actually do is they get on the highways when the highway uh, goes over their tiny little areas and they do speed traps and uh, that's very famous. There's been a lot of articles about that and it drives everyone else nuts. So there's a lot of calls uh, I think we've even had like congressmen make calls to get rid of these two and make them part of Cleveland. So I think that's eventually coming. Steve, also give me the stuff about the uh, the annexing, right, and the Congress and all that jazz. Google it and find me them articles and plop them bad boys on the screen for these folk. And let's put a link in the show notes below so I can read that, right? So I want you guys to go into this with eyes wide open. So all that's going on, right, and that's – Drastically reducing your price, and that's why you get a crazy POS, right? With this particular deal, uh, the sellers provided me with the POS and the inspection report. They had another buyer back out previously, so the seller doesn't want to let anybody come and do inspections. That's fine. Uh, I actually know the inspector that did the inspection. I ran through the inspection. Everything looks good. It all checks out. But the POS, which is literally like 80 freaking pages, I'll give that to you. That's what creates the big issues, Okay. Now, what we have, even though the house is in pretty solid condition, we got a few things with the POS and the city's just being nitpicky. Now, this is a 100-year-old building, okay? This building is 100 years old, right? And typically, when you have a 100-year-old building, right, and it was installed in one way, a lot of things get grandfathered in. This is where these crazy little villages that kind of make their own rules as they go, uh, you know, it gets a little wild, and they trample on people's rights. And, like, usually, you know, if you want, you could push back and sue them. They typically don't have that much money to even defend because the speed trap is, like, the only way they can remain solvent. But assuming you don't want to go through that process, and why would you? Because you're not the seller. So this particular seller is the one dealing with it. But what we got here is this gravel driveway. It's been a gravel driveway for 100 years. Never been a problem. But now the city's decided, nah, it's not good enough anymore, bro. Now you got to put in a concrete driveway. So you got to spend that coin, okay? Another thing they want you to do is, like, rebuild the back front porch, okay? Uh, they're saying there's some structural issues. You need to clarify that's good. So you got the driveway. You got the back porch. And in this crazy long inspection report, this is not something I disagree with, uh, but they didn't actually cite it. They said that uh, it may be asbestos uh, siding. Let me see if there's a good picture of the siding for you. Oh, no, we lost all the pictures. Uh, it may or may not be asbestos siding. So I would say it's in your best interest to plan another 10 to 15K into this to, to vinyl side encapsulate that, right? So you got the driveway, the porch, the vinyl siding. Now, here's the other thing about the city you got you to be aware of. Uh, unlike a lot of places in the Cleveland market, when you have these 100-year-old houses, they have these little lean-to garages, and they get dilapidated, and you tear them down, and that's that's it. No big deal. Uh, this one, if that happens, they'll make you replace the garage. However, on this particular POS inspection report, they said that there's no room for a garage, so they're not going to make you. But when you're dealing with a little city like this where they're kind of making their own rules, you have to wonder if eventually they're going to make you redo that, right? Maybe they'll go back on their word. They make shit up as they go, honestly. Uh, I mean, come on. They're, dude, their mayor, their mayor literally works part-time as a librarian in, like, Medina, okay? It's... It's a whole fucking mess. Steve, put that on the screen, too. <laughs> Get that on the screen. This fucking guy. Uh, I've gone back and forth with this guy a few times. He's a fucking idiot. But uh, anywho, he's, he's, in my opinion, a crook. But um, 
doesn't necessarily mean you still can't make some money here, right? But you just have to know what you're getting into, right? The educated investor can make some money, right? So the deal seems like it's a screamer, but this is all the stuff you're taking on, right? Right now they're saying you don't have to do a garage, but if they change their mind later and they're not an ex into Cleveland and they're still running things however they want, right? That's another 20000 out of your pocket when you become the seller one day. So all of those are reasons why this particular seller is not able to get what he should be getting, which is two hundred k for his property. So with all that said, I believe we could probably pick this up for a song. If you're willing to take on all that stuff, uh, 129 we don't have to pay that, I don't believe. I believe we can pick this up for 115 Then we're going to need to put 50 into it, right? Uh, the um, driveway that they're making us do, right? The porch, okay, and then I... They're not making us, but I think uh, covering up that asbestos siding is a good thing, right? So you're going to spend about 50 uh, doing those three things and then just tearing through the other 80 pages of just ticky-tack stuff, this or that. Like there's even like a line item in there that said, uh, like the tenant's cleaning supplies are messy. You should reorganize the shelf. Like some fucking crazy bullshit like that, right? So uh, all told, we probably get everything ready for about 50 k And then... Doing that, theoretically, you have a $200,000 property because it's going to be POS clearing. The next buyer, the bank, or anybody wouldn't have to factor in all the insane point-of-sale regulations that these folks are just putting out there. So you should have a $200,000 property, right? So if you're getting the market rent like I talked about earlier, that's going to bring home an average NOI every year of a little bit over seventeen grand, right? And here's what's so great about bird deals, right? If you're all in for 165, the 115 purchase price plus the 50 to clear the crazy POS stuff, you're all in for 165. We get it to appraise at 200. That means the bank gonna give you back 150, meaning you're only fifteen thousand dollars into the deal, which would project out to a 65.2 percent cash on cash return, right? So you can see that this particular investment has the ability to generate a ton of money. But with anything in real estate, there's always a catch, right? It's how much BS are you willing to deal with uh, in an effort to get yourself a quad kicking off 65%. If you're able to deal with all the BS I just mentioned, this would be a killer deal. If uh, you don't want to deal with something like that, maybe you want to wait till this gets annexed into Cleveland if that does happen. That's totally understandable as well. That's what I do, right? That's what I do here. I show you guys what's going on, and I give you a no BS transparent look. I don't think there's anybody out there selling real estate that's going to break something like this down with the type of insight I just gave you. I think most other realtors would be like, ah, they're selling for 200 This is what dirty. we got to buy it, right? There's usually a catch when things appear to be uh, too good to be true. And here... I've explained it to you, but you can still make some money if you want to deal with it. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.